you know, if you take care of your equipment, it'll take care of you. This is for local tree service, and I rarely work on their stuff. So let's take a look. This is a 2015 261. I mean, you can look. I mean, this thing's been run. All the plastic's yellowed on it. It's the early style cylinder. Hell, I even did a little performance work on this. A little janky muffler mod. But it's acting funny right now. Um, and I wanted to verify <clears throat> this decomp had a ton of fuzz around the outside edge of it. You know, just knocked most of it off. So I was thinking it's an air leak. I put a fresh decomp in there or a takeoff. So I had to get crafty with this. This actually gets its impulse line from behind the carburetor. It actually goes directly. There's not like a hose or something like that. So I've taken my compression tester taking the Schrader valve out of it and I've done both pressure and vacuum and it's holding rock solid. It was one of my things. I was like, well, you know, maybe it wants to idle then bog down. And that may have been from this. I didn't test it with the bad decomp. I knew it was leaking, but to what degree, who knew? Um, but I'm gonna pull the muffler on this and we've seen a ton of 261s. And the reason why I bring up how old that is <clears throat> their stuff lasts and their pistons look great. I would have imagined by now the bearings would have been gone and the seals would have been gone in this. But um, here, just sit tight for a sec. So I got the muffler pulled off and I didn't peek. You know, it's usually low hanging fruit when I know there's steel ultra in here that I'm gonna have some coking on this on the piston. And if you'll look, whoops, sorry, I'm, the chain's got me. There's, I can still see machining rings. I may have to talk you through it. Here, let me get the light turned down just a little bit. No carbon buildup in the exhaust port. I can tell you there's a nice film of lubrication. Let's see if I can get that off to the side just a little bit. These are some of the toughest shots to get with light. There, that looks good. Now I can't move. <laughs> All right, so I know the angle. Pull it down just a little bit more. But you know, the internals are always so clean and it's a blue oil of some kind. Um, and at what ratio? I've got a message into him. But you know, typically most people don't get this kind of mileage out of commercial use. And you have to remember, okay, the number one, um, you know, runtime saw on a tree crew is going to be the climbing saw and the ground saw is going to be the next one. You know, and curiously, uh, here's, here's one of their 362s. And I think this one's a 2015 when I looked up the uh, serial number. Here's another 261 of theirs. And, you know, just in for some minor vagina stuff, you know, like the, the trigger was wore out on the inside right there and the thr throttle rod kept coming out. I, you know, not babied and loved on, just, you know, it's amazing. And that's, you know, everybody say new stuff doesn't last that long. You know, it does if you run good oil and you take halfway decent. You know, all the air filters came in. They were clogged. I cleaned them. <laughs> you know, but that's just par for the course. So I'm going to do one last little follow-up if I can get a answer back from uh, Danny and find out what he runs and if he uses any additives in his uh, saw gas. Well, I heard back from the owner of the company. And, and to, to put this into context... Over the last several years, when I've worked on their equipment, I'm like, man, nobody else's pistons look like y'all. What do you oil do you run? I don't know. Danny does that. We don't know. He mixes it. They've got you know fuel on site for their trucks. 
and then gasoline on site for the few cars that they have, and then a designated uh, saw gas tank. And he mixes it, nobody else does, so everybody thinks it's a big mystery. And so I figured I'd just go straight to him, because again, this saw's got a lot of miles on it, and for the internals to look that good, I'm like, I gotta know. You know, I've kind of turned into the, that old, that two-stroke oil guy that just keeps beating the drum. So he texts me back, and he's running Sabre at 50 to 1. Always has, never changed, want to make sure everything looked good. Why was I asking? I was like, no, because it looks exceptionally good. So um, there you have it. This is a ultra, super-duper, long-term uh, test for... Uh, Am's old saber at 50 to 1. He said, you know, I know they say you can run at 80 to 1 or 100 to 1. I was like, yeah, it's just a little too skinny. I'm sure it still does okay and everything else. But, you know, long, long term, the tree company that I work at, if you haven't seen some of the other videos, they ran at 80 to 1. And I, long term, I would see a little bit of wear on the bottom of the skirts. So we bumped it up a little bit to 50. And, uh, but, you know, never had a lubrication failure, just had some wear. So I'll, uh, I'll stop talking now. If you've enjoyed this, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. Thanks, y'all. I almost left you hanging. I took this back outside and ran it. And uh, yes, this uh, decomp, excuse me, this decomp was leaking like a sieve. It was tight. It's just the shaft after all these years, just in that little cone you know, as a metal to metal fit, just wasn't sealing up like it used to. Um, so I had to take a pretty big swing at the adjustment screws because I was trying to tune around a problem. Um, anyway, so that that's the outcome of this. So the saw is perfectly fine um, and just needed that air leak tidied up because it would, it would sit there and idle and kind of lose tune and then die. It actually like it was kind of loading up and that was for me trying to tune around a problem. So uh, that's another valuable tool of pressure and vacuum testing. It, it really, you know, that's all I used. So, all right, that's it for today. Y'all have a great weekend.